the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Spirit, we choose to love one another and our neighbors, lifting each other up humbly, gently, patiently, as we grow into the full stature of Christ. Here we are a small part of one body in one spirit, with one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Sharing our gifts given to us by God. Here we share hope and worship God. Empowered by the extraordinary love of God. Join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. 
It is great to welcome you. I'm Annette Stiles Pendergrass, and it's great to welcome all of you who are here in worship with us and all of you who are worshiping with us online this morning. It's great to have you here. Now, if you were struggling a little bit over the fact that there were some microphone problems during the introit, I just want you to know we wanted you to feel at home. And it's been a while, right? Since you had to put up with sound problems, at least in the sanctuary. We've had to deal with them online as well. Um, we apologize, these things just happen, right? We're not in control of everything, but we are here to worship God today and we are grateful for that opportunity. So welcome to all of you. Um, if you haven't done so already, be sure to check in to let us know. If, you've, you, if you're here, you've already done that. But for those who are worshiping online, please hit the check-in button uh, so that we know that you're worshiping here with us today. Um, today we are concluding our launch sermon series as we think together about stage four, which is about orbiting in extraordinary love. And we're very excited to kind of wrap this up. It is the culmination of actually a two-year process of putting this launch sequence together. And so it's been a lot of fun to go through and uh, we look forward to the message later this morning. Allie and I are doing a tandem message today, which is a little different. So you can pray for us on that. Um, also, next Sunday, we launch a new message series, Teachable Moments, Lessons from the Gospel of Matthew, some particularly challenging uh, passages from uh, beginning in Matthew chapter 18. So we look forward to diving into that next week. Also coming up very soon, Journey and Oasis. Um, journey, our journey being our evening time, Wednesday evening spiritual formation, and that starts on September 9th and then Oasis the following day. We are offering hybrid options for both. So you can come in person to a class or you can come um, and participate via Zoom. A couple classes will only be Zoom and a couple classes will be hybrid. So um, there are sign-up sheets out in the lobby. You can do it that way uh, with a paper registration or you can go online to the website or you can simply call the office and we'll help to get you registered for those classes. We also are looking for folks to serve um, at Daily Bread on September 2nd at 10.30. Um, so contact Stacy Plonsky if you're able to do that. This is all done with um, appropriate social distancing measures that are put into place. So we hope to have a great group for that. Today is also a fifth Sunday. I'm waiting for that next slide. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, uh, a fifth Sunday for, the, for our special offering for the United Methodist Children's Home. It is our tradition to take up a special offering, to receive a special offering, so you can do that um, with the envelopes that have been provided, or you can do so online. Um, just click Children's Home on the, on the link there on our online giving link, and you'll be able to support the work of the home. Um, it is such a wonderful ministry that we get to be part of um, as a United Methodist Church here in Florida, so we're excited to be able to support them. Also, remember, if you uh, would like to worship in person, to be sure to register um, for that so that we just can be sure that we have plenty of space. Right now we do, that's not a problem, but we wanna just keep, stay on top of that. And I was asked to say to you, you can register like on Monday or Tuesday. You don't have to wait until Saturday, but the truth is it doesn't bother me. It, when you register. Just, we are glad to see you and glad for those who feel like they can come and be in person. So uh, we appreciate that. All of that said now, we are going to continue in worship with our prayer. As we go now before God in prayer, um, we do want to invite you in addition to praying for our um, fifth Sunday offering, that this is also our offering time in worship. So if you did not on your way in, we invite you to drop your offering in those uh, boxes on the way out. And as you 
possibly give to our fifth Sunday offering, we invite you to pray for the children and the workers at the children's home. We did have one update for you in terms of pastoral care. Uh, Many of you know Marty and Dave Smith. They are faithful members of our chancel choir. And after a long illness, Dave Smith passed away yesterday. Um, There are no details at this time about the services for him, but we ask that you would pray for Marty. Um, This has been a long journey and only complicated by COVID. And so we invite you to pray for those who are journeying with difficult illnesses because coronavirus, even if that's not what is at stake, makes visiting and being with family members in those difficult times even harder. So as we remember those folks and all those who are in pain or mourning this morning, uh, we go to God in prayer with a moment of silence. God of amazing surprises. How easy it is for us to focus on the big picture and forget that change comes in the smallest of ways in our hearts, our spirits, and then in our actions. We have gathered here this day full of joy and anxiety, celebration and anticipation of all that has happened in the past week and all that comes to us in the following week. We come from different experiences, but we all come anticipating your word of healing, anticipating your extraordinary love. And God, we know that there are those among us in our family and in our community that hurt today. And so we offer our prayers for our friends and family members who are in need of your healing, and your forgiveness and your comfort. We offer our prayers for those who are sick. We offer our prayers for those who are emotionally hurting, who are grieving. And we pray specifically today, God, for those who have lost loved ones like Marty Smith, for those who are suffering in the wake of Hurricane Laura and Hurricane Marco, for those who suffer in the wildfires in California, and those who are suffering under the continued weight of racial strife and injustice in our country. God, we know that you offer us love and grace beyond our imagination. Yet we also know that we sometimes withhold ourselves from you. We have a hard time imagining that you would find much of real worth in each of us. We think of ourselves as insignificant in your kingdom, but you have poured your extraordinary love on us. You have given us the seeds of hope and compassion, the gifts that you would have us use for the transformation of the world. And you have called us the treasure that is meant to enrich the world. Help us to be those people who are so confident in your presence that we dare to step out in faith, to work for you in places of need and strife, that as we give back a portion of your generosity, you would use our gifts, God, for the building of your kingdom here and around the world, that we would witness to your love in all that we do, proclaiming your presence with our mouths and with our actions. This day, God, we ask, us, we ask you to give us your guidance, your forgiveness, and your courage to be at work in your kingdom. We pray all of this using the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
children's moment. We continue to do this even though we are offering nursery and children's ministry, because we, elementary ministry, I mean, because we know that there are kids watching at home, so hello to you. And we've heard that the adults both here and at home get a lot out of the kids' moments too. So we invite you to enjoy this video as we prepare to hear our scripture. great reminder of the power of kindness and I would say the power of extraordinary love, right? To, to color all of our relationships. Uh, when we share love, when we share kindness, it's contagious, right? And we can feel that difference and we can see the change and the difference that it can make in our interactions with one another. And that's what we're thinking about today together as we wrap up this message series about what it means to orbit in extraordinary love that all of our lives, all of our actions, our words, our deeds would be characterized by that extraordinary love. So to help us think about that, uh, follow along with me as I read our scripture lesson for this morning, which comes from Ephesians chapter 4, and we'll begin the reading at verse 7 through verse 16. Uh, you can follow along on the screen or with a tablet or device or a Bible if you have one with you um, as we read. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. 
This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So for the last three weeks, we have been journeying through our newly developed discipleship launch sequence that together we might launch into a way of life and a way of faith that leads us to live in and through extraordinary love. We began our launch sequence with stage one, which is loving God. And we challenged one another to cultivate practices in our lives that can deepen our love for God, keeping it fresh, keeping it vibrant over our lifetime. Then we moved to stage two, which is loving each other here in the body of Christ. And we talked about the ways that our growth in grace is accelerated as we live in relationships of mutual love and accountability and encouragement with one another here in the body of Christ. Then last week, we moved to stage three and Jesus' command to love our neighbors as ourselves. We talked about how serving our neighbors, especially those in need, is another way that our hearts are shaped and formed in the likeness of Jesus Christ. And so today, we move to stage four, which is the ultimate goal of this whole launch sequence. The goal of all of these stages is for us to live lives that are characterized in every way by extraordinary love. But stage four is not simply a destination at which we arrive and then simply kind of hang out. <laughs> like all the other stages, stage four is a dynamic status where we are constantly seeking to renew and to refresh and to grow in every area, in every aspect of our faith, which is why I love the image that we're using for stage four, which is orbit. In stage four, we are constantly then orbiting around and through all of the other stages. We are constantly returning to stage one, stage two, and three, and assessing how we are growing in each one of these areas. And so we're constantly asking ourselves and asking God, God, what is the new thing that you want to do in and through me? What is the new way you want to help me deepen my love for you? What is the new way you want me to grow in my love for others in the body of Christ? What is the new way you want to challenge me to grow in my love for and service with my neighbors, especially those in need? In orbit, you see, we're constantly assessing the health and vitality of all our other systems. Now, I want to be very clear, I am not a rocket scientist. If you know me, you obviously know that. And at the same time, I am very aware of the presence of actual rocket scientists all over the life of this congregation. And for proof of that, I encourage you to check out the full video that is found on our website. It actually also was out in the e-letter, um, but it's found on the website under the Grow tab, and it's a video by Rich Dixon. Today, we're going to show you just a portion of that video, but I encourage you to watch the whole thing online for yourself. It is just amazing. It's fascinating to hear from someone who was on the ground floor in those early Apollo missions. Now, again, while I'm not a rocket scientist, I think I am safe in saying that when a spacecraft is in orbit, it doesn't just go into autopilot. You see, these spacecraft are equipped with systems which monitor all the other systems which are very basic to its functioning. And that's actually what Rich Dixon worked on, on the telemetry system that gave real-time information to the spacecraft as to how all of the other systems were functioning. And that is what we're called to do 
as we seek to orbit in extraordinary love in our faith journey. We're constantly seeking to address the health and vitality of all of the vital elements of our faith, improving, growing, deepening our love for God, our love for one another and for our neighbors, and seeking to live out that love through our hearts, our heads, and our hands. And that is exactly the process that is described in the scripture that I just read from Ephesians. Here, the author of Ephesians is moving his readers to the climax of all that has gone before. Here we come to the central point, and that point, if you boil it all down, is in short, maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. Here we are challenged to, as it says, grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. And Allie's going to share a little bit more about the scripture passage. Thank you. Yes, so in Ephesians, in the letter to the Ephesians, just as in so many other letters in the New Testament, the community has experienced all manner of division and disagreement. Um, That's pretty typical for the early church. Yet here, the author is calling them to grow up. I love that language, it makes me laugh. Uh, Into (laughs) the love of God and into the gifts that they have been given by the Spirit. See, they aren't all the same, and that is what, at this culmination, the author wants them to hear. They're not all the same, but together, bound together in that love of Christ, that full stature of God's love, they can be unified and transformative as a mature body. In our our own faith, in our own orbit, we have to be, as well, very diligent to use our gifts and to check into our own spiritual systems to make sure that we are still in line with that maturity, what the scripture describes as the full stature of Christ, which says that they are not to be tossed about by every wind of doctrine, that they speak the truth in love, that they grow up into Christ and into unity in the body. As you hear that, can you think about the things that we've been talking about for the past few weeks? Using our head to be sound in our doctrine, to think about God in healthy and correct ways. Using our hearts to speak the truth in love, to take on that presence and that stature of love in the world. Being clear and offering the gospel to others. Using our hands and our lives to love Christ as we grow into love of one another and of our neighbor, seeing Christ in every person that we meet. In stage four, we're not adding anything new, except that it is time to use your gifts and your maturity to keep loving God, loving each other, and loving our neighbors as a mature body, now in extraordinary ways. When we hear this call from Ephesians, we're also hearing an invitation to serve as God has created us. Not all of us are talented musicians, not me, or teachers or mathematicians, we are not rocket scientists, but each of us has a gift to share both with the body and in extraordinary love to the world. And part of this full stature of Christ, this Christian maturity, is continuing to uncover how God can use you for the great redemption of the whole world, of everything, and how we can trust God as God is cultivating this Christian community into its fullest maturity. A Methodist way of understanding this Christian maturity is called sanctifying grace. And while we didn't spend much time on it throughout the rest of the sequence over the past few weeks, the GROW team was very intentional in their creation of this launch sequence to use both our Methodist heritage and Wesley's work, particularly around grace, to inform the way that we thought about what it means to be a follower of Christ. And Wesley's idea idea of grace is just this, that God pursues us proveniently then we say yes in justifying grace, and then we continue in the life of faith, 
And that continuing, even after we've said yes, accepted Jesus' lordship, is sanctifying grace. This week on our podcast, which I think is pretty good if you want to take a listen to it, Mike mentioned that justification is like getting off the bench and getting into a basketball game. But sanctification, that is the basketball game. For the rest of our faith-filled lives, we are to live and love and serve and give in the game just as Jesus would have us to. It's really exciting to think about. Life doesn't end, but life begins on that court as we continue in sanctifying grace. We are to use our gifts to engage in the first three stages just in more extraordinary ways. And again, we can trust that Holy Spirit working within us that when we dedicate ourselves to that work, that we will be transformed into Christ's likeness. And it really, in that way, isn't restrictive. It's joy-filled and exciting to participate in this part of our faith. John Wesley talked often about working out our own salvation. And in one of his sermons about that, he says, since he, God, worked in you of his own good pleasure because God wanted to, without any merit of yours, without anything that we had done before that, both to will and to do, it is possible for you to fulfill all righteousness. It is possible for you to love God because God first loved us and to walk in love after this pattern of righteousness. Sometimes we remember this, that it is possible to be sanctified and brought up into that Christian maturity. But other times we forget. We think we'd rather sit on the bench, we might buy the shoes, give the fees to be a part of the league, but we don't get into the game. Thanks for tracking with me, I'm not a sports person. Being a part of a lifelong faith means that there will and there should be fruit, that we are active and participating with our gifts and there is evidence of that. The fruit is the fruit of the spirit, the evidence of sanctification in our lives that we are transformed and working for Christ's transformation in the world. And I'm sure you've seen that fruit in others. Who are the saints in your life? And as I say saints, I'm not just talking about those who have lived a long time ago who are sainted by the Catholic Church, but you can think of them, can't you? For me, the saints in my life exude this extraordinary love in their spirituality, in their interpersonal relationships, and in their relationship to the world. The faith, their faith isn't just about what they do, or the way that they think, because often the saints in my life and I disagree. Rather, they're motivated to do these things because of their deep and abiding love in Jesus. And here at Sun Tree, there are saints everywhere. I'm sure you know that already. We have saints that serve in all of our ministries and often part of extraordinary love being lived out in any United Methodist Church, but also here at Sun Tree is the extraordinary love that it takes to be in leadership. And so we're grateful for all of those who take on leadership roles and as a part of their sanctification. And as I mentioned this, the person who is in this testimony video that we wanna show you would be mortified that I have named him in this list of qualities because he is so humble. But that is what makes him a person of extraordinary love. And we'd love for you to hear from him about how he lives that out in his life. Good morning, Century United Methodist. My name is Jeff Sweet, and I am the um, chairman of the Church Trustees Committee, and I was asked to speak briefly this morning about how I felt extraordinary love has led uh, me to get involved in leadership of our church. And I think that I can only start with, it's the people of Century United Methodist. Um, we started coming to church in 2006, and with our children and immediately we're met with open arms and welcome to all sorts of activities and ministries that uh, we, we all decided that Century United Methodist is our home and will be our home. And we started getting connected through all sorts of uh, experiences and volunteering 
Um, E3 was a great one going out in the streets. Um, but my leadership uh, portion actually started in scouting. Um, I've been in scouting leadership since uh, 2000 and recently ended my efforts there um, in 2018. Um, I went with my son all the way from Cub Scouts to Eagle. But um, in 2014, Terry Hill called me out of the blue and asked me if I'd be willing to serve on a finance committee. And I went, finance? Finances. Uh, I'm an engineer. That's they call me because I'm over budget or something. But uh, she convinced me to become a member, and I have. And and since 2014, I've enjoyed um, serving on committees, um, and uh, and and today leading a committee. And I think it's all goes back to the fact that uh, I feel I have a servant heart. That's my spiritual gift. That's always the first one. And I also recognize that um, Jesus is Lord. And if Jesus is Lord, then I'm a servant of Jesus. And if I serve as Jesus has told me to, he said, follow me, um, that being a servant is a form of um, necessarily actually worship. And we glorify God. And that's why I relish um, being part of the leadership. And it, it, the reason that I feel leadership is an important role is that I can help extend that extraordinary love that our church provides. So ultimately we are glorifying God and uh, and it's only through extraordinary love that we can offer our community that uh, we can accomplish it. So thank you for your time. Will you join with me and express your gratitude to Jeff for sharing that? You know, when, when Jeff said that whenever he takes spiritual gift inventories, servant comes up as one of his spiritual gifts, and, and I was just like, yeah, um, we see that, right? We see his servant heart in everything that he does. And that's the thing. Extraordinary love will always lead us deeper and deeper into the heart of Christ, which is a heart that is characterized by servanthood, right? And it is a form of worship when we serve in that way. I have to say that whenever I think of sanctification, as Ali was talking about, that process of becoming more and more like Jesus, I always go to, in my head, Jesus' teaching in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. And the closing words in chapter 5 that Jesus says about that. Um, you see, he has just finished the, you have heard it said, but I say to you sayings. You might remember those. If you don't, go back and read Matthew 5. And the culmination of those sayings is where Jesus says, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And then he concludes the whole teaching, or at that section of teaching with this, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, I have to admit that before I went to seminary and learned how Wesley understood that perfection, that verse of Scripture really freaked me out. You see, I would hear that and I would think, are you serious, God? I mean, like, there's no way. I am not going to be perfect. I, I am a mess. And no matter how much I'm growing, I can't imagine that there aren't always going to be parts of my life that are a bit messy. But then I learned that Wesley understood perfection not as perfectionism, which is what most of us think of, as in getting everything right, but as perfect love for God and perfect love for our neighbors. And that's exactly what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 5. He was describing the tangible ways that love can be perfect, even extraordinary. For example, when we love our enemies, it is indeed extraordinary. It is the extraordinary love of God making its home in us and having its way in us. And we can't do that on our own. It is God's love through the living presence of Christ, through the Holy Spirit that is made real in us that makes that kind of love possible. However, we have to do our part. Right? We have to cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit in that ongoing work of transformation. And as Ali said, we can see the fruit of that work, that extraordinary love in the lives of others. This weekend, I was scrolling through Facebook, and I came across a post 
from an organization in Orlando called iDignity, which works with those um, in areas of high need in, in Orlando um, to help equip them um, to take control of their lives and to, to grow in their self-sufficiency. And this post, though, was celebrating a woman that is a dear, dear friend of mine that I've known for at, uh, at least 25 years, celebrating her 90th birthday. And they were celebrating Emily Ann Zimmerman's 90th birthday because of all of the work that she has done and continues to do at iDignity. She's still mentoring young people through that program. She's still serving on the board. And it reminded me that that, that is her life. It is an example of extraordinary love that she has always been, in all the years I've known her, engaged in growing deeper and deeper in her love for God, in her love for others, and in her love for her neighbors in need. And that's what extraordinary love looks like. We grow, as Ali said, in the fruit of the Spirit. I have to say, unfortunately, I've also seen what happens when we fail to keep checking in, when we fall out of orbit, when we fail to be attuned to all of our systems and how we are growing in love for God and each other and our neighbor. See, we know that in a spacecraft, any one system failure can have disastrous consequences, right? The loss of the spacecraft and sometimes even the loss of life. Our failure to be attuned to the work of Christ in us, to ignore our spiritual health and vitality, can also lead to devastating consequences in our lives. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen colleagues, pastors, who went into ministry out of their deep, passionate love for God, out of their deep desire to help others to come to know the grace of Jesus Christ, I've watched those same pastors literally crash and burn their lives and ministry and witness for Christ completely upended because somewhere along the line, they went on autopilot. They failed to be vigilant in that orbit of extraordinary love. They drifted off course, often without even realizing what was happened, happening until suddenly their lives and their ministry fell apart. And the pain that they experienced themselves, the pain that their failures caused others, the damage to the witness of the church has been enormous. Of course, the good news is that we worship a God whose extraordinary love can save us and redeem our failures through the extraordinary grace of Christ. And that grace constantly invites us to use that basketball metaphor again, back into the game, right? No matter what, we can get back into the game and God, Jesus can repair us and repair the damage that we've done. But we can save ourselves and others from the pain of that kind of system failure with our vigilance and our intentionality and asking ourselves and God, how are we doing in our love for God, for one another and our neighbors? Here is how Rich Dixon described that process in the video that we mentioned earlier. Watch this real quickly. Several of my lessons learned from these Apollo launches seem to apply to our new launch here at Suntree United Methodist Church. First, we need to focus on continuous improvement, both in our work lives and in our personal lives. Second, we need to invest in ourselves to make these improvements, hopefully as part of a team or group seeking the same objectives. Third, the part we play may be small, but it is critical and vital to the overall success of the mission. Finally, it's almost impossible to predict how our efforts today will affect other people one year or even 10 years into the future. Our pioneering satellite transmission work from 50 years ago is now available to almost any passenger on an international airline flight. Just pull out your cell phone, connect it to the aircraft Wi-Fi system, and respond to your emails by sending pictures and videos. Who could have imagined that? 
So now we have a new launch opportunity right ahead of us here at Sun Tree United Methodist Church. If we can focus on continuous improvement and invest in improving ourselves, then I can't wait to see how our church blossoms as we launch into extraordinary love. Will you join me in thanking Rich again for his wonderful work? I love his summary of his testimony, and I would invite you all to watch the whole thing. It was in the e-letter this past week, but it's also on our website. Because what Rich says is what this map has been, the sequence has been all about. We need to continually look at ways we can improve both our relationship with God and one another and the world. And we need to invest in the mature body connected together in the spirit as we do so, that teamwork that we can do. Because even if your gift seems small or insignificant or what you can contribute seems small or insignificant, you're vital for what we're doing here and in the world. And finally, when we release extraordinary love into our world, just like in our children's moment, we have no idea what is possible when we let that extraordinary love out into our world that needs it so terribly. And that's why along with our map, our sequence, the team created a non-judgmental assessment for you to do some of that continuous feedback. It's contained in the paper copies that are in the back of the church, and it's also contained on our website. And you can go through it and ask yourself, just you and God, where is it that God wants to do a new thing in you and with your gifts growing into extraordinary love? Just this past week, I heard from someone who heard the call to extraordinary love in their relationship with racial injustice in our country. And they're home until there's a vaccine. And we know that COVID makes using your gifts in a tangible way difficult. But this person said, even though they're home until a vaccine or otherwise we are safe to come back out fully, they said that they decided to join with their dollars and their presence, the NAACP here in Brevard County uh, virtually. And so they went to their first meeting this week. And that was them deciding with their resources and their ability and their time to live out extraordinary love that God has called them to. And as I think back on what the team that created this sequence was hoping and dreaming about, what the team that created the 4D vision plan even was hoping and dreaming about for a discipleship sequence is that using the assessment, using the feedback, using the sequence, you would be more excited and more jazzed and more in love with Jesus than you were the day before. And that together as a church, as a mature body growing into one another, we can offer that hope and that excitement and that extraordinary love to others as they join us. Because imagine what is possible if we together continue to engage our faith and continue to believe in that extraordinary love for extraordinary things to be done among us. And so today we invite you to take the gifts that God has given you and to use them and to be a part of this sequence and extraordinary love. Will you pray with me about that? God of love and grace, we thank you this day for the call that you have given us to say yes to Jesus as Lord over our lives, to say yes to that grace, and then God, to live it out as we grow further up and further into the love that you have given us. God, empower us by your Holy Spirit. Let your Holy Spirit whisper in our ears and nudge us and call us into your extraordinary love. God, enable us, empower us to use the tools that the church has given us to follow your call and to share extraordinary love with the world. We are so grateful, God, that we are participating in your kingdom love here and around the world when we say yes to you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Will you stand with me, please?
and now may the love of God, the grace of God's Son, Jesus Christ, and the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit launch you, launch all of us into extraordinary love in word and deed. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.